Hi, I'm Benjamin Lowe, author of Master Math Models and tutor to more than 2,500 kids over the years. Today, I'm here to share with you how to make a wise decision based on your child's PSLE results so that you choose the right school for your child. I'm sure many of you are very excited or worried about the choices that you want to make. And you should be making the right and wisest decision. And I'm here to help you do that. If you would like to learn about lessons and how to solve questions, I have lots of videos. Please subscribe and watch my videos, which are updated weekly. Okay, let's continue with this. So why is this important? Because getting the right school will determine your child's life for the next four to six years. And if he gets into a school that he enjoys, then his secondary school experience will be very meaningful. Otherwise, it might not be, okay? So why is it important to choose the right school? Among other reasons, one of them is that the courses available are different in different schools. And of course, that also means the courses that your child can take after secondary school. Aside from that, there are some schools with a strong history and culture. And these schools provide a strong identity for your child even after he leaves secondary school. Okay, how does this contribute to a child's improvement or development? Well, if a child feels a sense of identity with a school, then the chances are better that the child will want to do better in order to make the school proud, especially if the school has a good record of results. Okay, now here are the important things to consider aside from what I've said. The first thing you want to think of is the cutoff point. Second one is the distance. The third one is the co-curricular activities. And the fourth one is about being realistic. Okay, I will explain at the end of this video what I mean by being really realistic. And this really, really matters. Okay, the first point, and of course, the, the main point of consideration is the AL score or the AL COP. COP stands for cutoff point. Your child will have six choices to make. And these six choices will determine where your child goes based on how your child selects the schools. It is purely merit-based, and this means that another student that chooses a school before your child with a better score will always get the place in that school. So it is not wise to choose schools that are clearly out of your child's score range, whether it's too high or too low, and therefore not being able to fulfill your child's developmental ability. Okay, so how do you choose, how do you make these choices wisely? The first one, choices one and two, should be a maximum of two points above the AL score. So for example, if your child has got 12 points for the PSLE, just as an example, then the choice of school that your child makes should not be lower than 10 points. So a 10-point school and 11-point school based on last year's results would be a good choice. Choices three and four are the choices that your child most likely will be getting, okay? That is, if you choose the indicative score from last year based on that score and match it to your child's AL results. So if your child's AL result is 12 and you choose a school that has uh, an intake cutoff point of 12 or 13, then the chances are good that your child will end up in that school. Choices five and six is really the insurance choices, okay? It's a safety net that you need to use to ensure that at the very least, if your child doesn't make it to the first four choices, then your child must end up in these choices five and six so that, well, it's not too far from your home and it's a school that you don't mind your child getting into. Now, on a side note, why shouldn't you choose a school that is four points or five points below your child's AL score? So going back to our example, if your child has got 12 points and you choose a seven-pointer school, then the chances are that you probably already wasted that choice. Also, the choices that you make, for example, in three and four, if they are of AL score schools that are lower than choices one and two, then you have also 
wasted those choices because if they can't make, get it into if they can't get into school of choice one and two, then the chances of them making it to choice three and four is also very unlikely. Okay, so and of course I was saying choices five and six is the safety net that you need to look and use to protect your child's uh, school choice. All right, let's carry on. So where do you find this information? This information can be found by simply copying and pasting this link, which is found in the description below this video. You can go to that later. Just copy and paste it. And it shows all the important dates. Okay, I have this opened up over here. And you can see it tells you how do you make your choices, uh, when you need to submit, and uh, even when the results will be out. Okay, these are the important information that you will need to know. The next one is how to use the school selection portal, also known as the school finder, to find the right school for your child. Again, this one, this link, you can either type it out or you can go down to the description section below, copy and paste it, and you will be able to use it to uh, look for a school that is suitable for your child. For example, if you are staying where I am right now, as I'm talking to you, I'm in the Jurong area, then you could, for example, type your postal code, which I have here, or you can type Jurong. And uh, when I type Jurong, I'm given Jurong East and Jurong West, okay? So maybe if I put Jurong East, and the next thing is I want to choose based on the PSLE score that you can see over here. PSLE score range of 2021. So this is based on last year. And if, for example, your child has gotten uh, 12 points, then you can key in over here, perhaps, 12 to 13 points, okay? And then you will get the school. Now you'll find that, hey, how come there's only one school? Well, that's the indicative point for this area. And I would suggest that you can widen the choice by area, all right? If your child has got 12 points, then maybe you want to key in here, 10 to 11, slightly different choices based on different areas, okay? You can see that over here. And then uh, if your child has got 12 points, again, this is just an example, then you can go for 14 to even as low as 16 or 17 points if you want to be really safe. And you will have the choices that are available based on that score range. Okay, so uh, you can help yourself to that. And uh, let me know if you have questions. You can put it in the comments after the video. Okay, let me carry on first. The next one is the secondary schools via ranking. 2022. This is the another link that I have created. And I've put this into my Telegram group. Uh, it is especially for people who are in my Telegram group that you can find in the description below. Uh, you will be able to get this link, which will show you the choices of schools based on 2021 AL results. And this is in order okay as you can see on top you have six points seven and it goes down all the way by ranking to 22 points so right now the next thing you want to talk about is distance so how important is distance i would suggest that it really really matters okay what is the difference well in singapore for primary school selection most parents would have chosen a school that is near to where they stay so the chances are for your child to get up in the morning to go to school, it isn't that far. But for secondary school, that is not the way schools are chosen. This means that the secondary school that your child is posted to could end up being very, very far away from your home. So what happens if you have to travel a long distance? The first thing to keep in mind is that secondary schools are much stricter than primary schools when it comes to punctuality. This means that if your child is late for school, even a second late, a minute late, they would face things like detention. And these things are actually recorded down. So you don't want to be late, okay? There are demerit points for that. Now, if your child needs to travel an hour and a half, for instance, to get to a school, and the school requires them to be in school by say 7 a.m., this means that your child most likely would have to wake up at five or just before five and get ready and then leave home by 5.30. So, and this would be for the next four to six years. So you really want to consider whether this is what you want, especially if you're sending your child to school. Okay, then the other thing is, uh, what happens after school? Well, after school, 
And again, this is where secondary school is quite different from primary schools. They have a lot of CCAs and also remedial classes and all that, which can drag on till quite late, okay, including project work. And think about this. If your child finishes the project work or the CCA by 7 p.m., and your child is an hour and a half away from home, what does that mean? It means that by the time he gets home, it will have been pretty late. After having dinner, you know, a shower, and then getting down to the homework, this might mean that your child would have to do homework late into the night and still wake up early the next day. So distance really, really matters, okay? Put this into strong consideration. The next thing is the co-curricular activities. Well, why does this matter? Well, for um, promotion from secondary school to the next level, be it a JC or a poly, the leadership positions, aside from the regular CCA points, will make a difference in their uh, selection of courses, and whatever they may want, okay? So leadership positions matter in CCA, especially in secondary school, again, slightly different from primary school, and character development. Now, co-curricular activities, CCA, allow your child to mingle with other children that is not academic, and this builds a different kind of bond. So uh, I believe that this matters a lot in terms of their character development, their EQ, aside from their IQ. So this matters, okay? What else? Well, if you choose a school that has a niche, for example, in a certain spot, okay? In my case, I like soccer, okay? You, for yours, it might be different, but supposing you choose a school that has soccer because you want your child to be in the soccer team, you need to ask yourself some honest questions and being realistic, like, what is my child's aptitude and current ability in soccer? If this school has a niche, it means that this school is pretty good at this CCA, wins awards year after year, and will be very selective about the players that they take in or the members in that CCA, okay? Be it, for example, the band or dance or whatever it may be. So what happens if your child does not make it into the school with the CCA that he wants, he or she wants? The answer is that if they don't make it to the CCA that they want, and supposing they had chosen the school based on that CCA, what will happen is that your child will be placed into another CCA, okay? Because CCAs are necessary. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, there are points for taking part in co-curricular activities that affect their choices after secondary school, especially leadership positions. All right, so the reality really, really matters, okay? The question is this, do you really want your child to be in the school that he or she just manages to get into. Well, just like any other occupation, for example, you have um, sportsmen, you have businessmen, you have scientists, you have lawyers, you have doctors who are better than others in their same field and profession. There are teachers who are better in teaching than other teachers within the same school. And for many, many schools, the truth is, their year-end results, say at the end of secondary four, really matters. So, given that they have students segregated into different abilities and different classes based on their abilities, where do you think they are going to put their better teachers into? I think you know the answer to that question. And of course, those who are more, perhaps newer, less experienced will be placed most likely, I think, in classes that um, don't really matter that much to the school's overall standing. Okay, you can agree or disagree with me, but I think you get the picture. Hi, I'm Benjamin Lowe, author of Master Math Models. And uh, from my previous video on how to select a secondary school without regrets, I've had many, many uh, questions from lots of places. And so I'm creating this to give you a better idea of what I meant. So the first one here is uh, based on an AL score example of 15 points. So a balanced score, as you can see, the choices are there. So the first two choices are like uh, one point below 15. Choice three and four are where the AL score is. And choice five and six is to ensure uh, that you will get the schools that you want, at the very least. Okay. 
And uh, here is hoping for the best with insurance. Your first choice is two points below. Second choice is one point below. Three, choice three and four are where your score is. Choice five and six is a couple of points above, okay? And then uh, if you don't want to take any chances, then you should be doing this. Uh, choice one, two, three, four are all based on your AL score. And then uh, five and six is to ensure and give you, uh, to ensure that you get a school that you want. Then for uh, this one is called wasting your choices because if you put choice one and two as 15 to 16, then your choices three and four here being uh, choices that are lower score, mean, meaning that it's harder to get into, would most likely be wasted. You will not be even using these two choices. It will just skip from 15 to 16 up to choice five and six. And uh, if you don't get any of those, then you don't get the schools, okay? Uh, and then after that, uh, this one is called living dangerously, high risk, okay? 13, two points below, 14, one point below, 15, your score, okay? Now, if you don't get any of this, you will end up in a school that uh, is not among your choices, okay? So this is very, very risky. And very, very safe will be, you know, you've got a 15 score. And, and so you put 16 for your AL choice one and two, 16 to 18 for uh, choice number three. Then number four is higher than that. Number five and six are even higher than that. Okay, this will be extremely, extremely safe. Okay, but it would mean that uh, you don't get to try for schools that are, uh, you know, that, that you worked so hard for. You know, you got 15 points and you're only trying for 16. Okay, but of course, this is all personal and uh, individual. It's up to you how you want to do this. Okay, I know I went by quite quickly. So you can always uh, rewind this video back to the front and look at the choices again to get a better understanding. Okay, if you found this useful, subscribe to the channel. I have lots of teaching videos and they will be added on a weekly basis. Uh, you can join my Telegram group, which has more resources and uh, share this with your friends who need it. Okay, so remember to subscribe to support the channel. I would appreciate it and it costs you nothing. All right, if you have further questions, uh, send me a comment uh, and I will answer your comments. Good luck on your choices.